Hi guys, welcome to the video for H6-3. I'm going to work through problem 6-66 in this video in case you're having trouble with it at home. Let's get started. The prompt reads, CPM engineers are considering developing a private space rocket. In a computer simulation, the rocket is approaching a star and is caught in its gravitational pull. When the rocket's engines are fired, the rocket will slow down, stop momentarily, then pick up speed and move away from the star, avoiding its gravitational field. CPM engaged the rocket engines when it was 750,000 miles from the star. After one full minute, the rocket was 635,000 miles from the star. After two minutes, the ship was 530,000 miles from the star. So letter A says, name the three points given in the information above if X equals the time since the engines were engaged and Y equals the distance in thousands of miles from the star. As we look back up here, we'll see that we've got the three data points. It says that they engaged the rocket engines when it was 750,000 miles from the star. Okay, so that was the first time that they actually engaged the engines. Okay, so we'll call that basically like our time point would be like zero. So at zero minutes uh, from when they engaged it there, that was when they initially engaged the engines, it was 750,000. So we're, we're only going to put 750 because... We know that these numbers that we're giving are in thousands of miles, so 0, 0,750. Okay, now our second data point says after one full minute, the rocket was 635,000 miles from the star. All right, so that means one minute later, it was 635,000 miles from the star. And then after two minutes, the ship was 530,000 miles from the star. So there's our third data point. So after two minutes, we we're at 530,000 miles from the star. Now let's just, to be clear, what's actually happening here, right? Like let's say this is like the surface of the star and the, the rocket's coming in, right? It's coming in and the gravitational pull from the star is pulling the rocket towards the star, but it doesn't want to go to the star because it'll burn up, right? So just envision this rocket is kind of like being pulled in. We'll pretend like it's being pulled in backwards here. It's here's our little rocket, right? And what it's done here is it's starting to engage the engine here so that it can go away from the star. So they started engaging it there, and what'll happen here is it's it's coming in, it's coming in, it's coming in, and it'll slow down. Eventually it'll stop for a moment and then it'll start to progress and move the other way away from the star. Okay, so we've got our three data points and it says, based on the points in part A, make a rough sketch of a graph that shows the distance reaching a minimum and then increasing again over time. What kind of function could uh, follow this pattern? And, you know, we've been working with quadratics and curve fitting with quadratics. So obviously this is going to be a quadratic. If we think about sketching a graph here, I'm going to put my X and Y axes on here. And let's just let our X axis represent the number of minutes. And then our Y axis should represent, uh, what was it, uh, thousands of miles. Thousands of miles. So as we see here, I'm going to do it in blue. Like, remember, as time is going on this direction, right? As time is going on this direction, okay? Uh, that means time is, you know, it's going by a number of minutes here. Our distance, right, it's coming down. It's getting closer and closer and closer, but the, it's slowing down, remember, and eventually it's almost like it's going to stop. Right, and then it's going to start increasing and going back up the other direction. Okay, remember this is the distance on 
our y-axis there. So it's going to make this parabola shape. When it's at that very bottom, at that vertex down there, that's that point where it stopped for a second here because it's actually changing directions from decreasing to then increasing distance from the star. So we could say that this will have a parabolic path. Okay, so it's got to be a quadratic. So the path is parabolic, like this means it's a parabola. So our function has got to be quadratic. All right, now letter C says find the equation of a graph that fits the three points you found in part A. All right, so we're going to use those three points from up here in part A. We're going to use that zero, whoops, wrong tool, zero, 750, one, 635, and two, 530. So make sure you are writing neat and give yourself some room to work there. So we've got... We're going to use this form of our equation, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And we're going to use that first point here. We're going to say 750 is going to equal a times 0 squared plus b times 0 plus c. Our second point, I'll try to maybe color code these for you. Our second point, the 1, 635, we've got 635 is equal to a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c. And our third one will be 2, 530. So we'll say 530 will equal a times 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c. All right, and remember, at any point, you can pause this and, and start reworking again and then come back and check it if uh, you're having trouble again. But I'm going to go ahead and just simplify each of these equations. So I'm going to have, in this one, when we look at it, right, 0 squared is 0, and 0 times anything we know is 0. So both of those are going to be 0, and what we're going to actually end up with here is just C is equal to 750. Right, because there's no sense in writing 0a plus 0b, so we actually get c equals 750. Now, our second equation, we have 1 squared is 1 times a would give us a. Then we have plus b plus c should equal 635. And then our green equation here. I've got 2 squared is 4, so we have 4a plus 2b plus c equals 530. Okay, so this is like our equations, we'll call this one equation 1, equation 2, and equation 3, so that you can tell what I'm talking about. Well, the great thing about this problem is the fact that we already know that C is equal to 750. And watch what happens now if we take that and we put it into each of our other two equations. I'm going to substitute the 750 into equation 2. Right, and I'll do that. Uh, let's see, I'll do that down here. Right, so here's our equation 2. When I plug in at 750, I now have A plus B plus 750 equals 635. And let's just go ahead here and just get that 750 with the 635. So if we just subtract it from each side, we now have our equation is going to be a plus b is going to equal, and let's just make sure we get this right. Let's do 635 minus 750, just to make sure we don't goof it up, negative 115. All right, get that calculator out of the way. So that is like our equation number two still, right? It's just the most simplified part. In fact, you know what? Because it's a, an equation that has two variables, I'm going to go ahead and just box it so it stands out. So when we're looking for it, we'll be able to find it pretty easily. Now let's do the same thing with equation three, right? Our equation number three, let's just do it right beside it. Okay, so we're going 4a plus 2b 
and then we've got plus 750 equals 530. And then we'll do the exact same thing we just did. Let's just move the constant terms together. So we'll subtract 750 from each side. So let's just do 530 minus 750. So it'd be negative 220. So we're going to say 4a plus 2b should equal negative 220. And let's just box that one in. It's an important equation. All right, now, if we want to solve for a and b, if we want to solve for a and b, then we now have two equations, each with two variables. So we didn't come up with the equations 4 and 5, but we didn't need to since we knew that c was 750. So let's use our boxed equations to find our a's and b's. So I'm going to use that equation 3. Now, we could simplify it if we wanted to by dividing everything by 2, but I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'm going to just do it as 4a plus 2b equals negative 220. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply my equation 2 by a negative 2. So I'm going to take this equation and multiply it by a negative 2 so I can cancel out my b's. So I should have a negative 2a minus 2b. And then when I multiply a negative 115 by a negative 2, I should get a positive 230. So let's do our elimination here. All right, we've got that these are going to eliminate. And now 4a plus a negative 2a is 2a. And negative 220 plus 230 is going to give us a positive 10. So we divide each side by 2, and we get that a is equal to 5. All right, that's important. Now let's take it and let's find our other values, right? So let's just use our uh, equation 2, that simplified version of it. Let's plug in 5 into that equation 2, right? I'm just trying to help you see which ones I'm using. So I've got 5 plus b is going to equal negative 115. So we'll just subtract the 5. And we're going to get that b equals negative 120. All right. And then we already know what c is. It's up here. And we've pretty much, looks like we've got our equation. Our equation should be y equals, we've got 5x squared minus 120x plus 750. All right, so now that we've got that, remember, it's really easy to check. Just take your calculator, go in there. Let's just graph that. We have 5x squared minus 120x plus 750. All right, make sure I typed it in correctly. It looks good there. And right, I mean, you can look at the graph if you want. You see there's the parabola. But more importantly, we want to go ahead and look at our table. And we want to make sure that those points are on there. You see this first point, 0, 750. I know it's small. The next one is 1, 635. And then you see we also have the point 2, 530. So we have the correct points on our graph. So that means that is the correct equation. Now, the last little part of this says, if the ship comes within 50,000 miles of the star, the shields will fail and the ship will burn up. Use your equation to determine whether the, sh uh, the spaceship has failed to escape the gravity of the star. Okay, so if it comes within 50,000 miles of the star, remember that's the distance. And when we're looking at our x's and our y's, remember our x was our number of minutes and our y was the distance. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our equation down here. And we're going to see here, if we plug in 50, will we get answers? If we get that there are answers, then that means that the spaceship did go within 50,000 miles and probably burned up. So let's look at it and see here. Let's plug 50 in for y, and then we're going to take this equation, and we are going to solve it. And you can solve this, you know, all sorts of different ways if you want to... You know, you can solve it by graphing, you can solve it by factoring, doing all different things. That's what I'm going to do. Let's see, I'm going to subtract 50 from each side first. 
Remember, it's quadratic, so you want it set equal to 0. We have 5x squared minus 120x plus 700. Now, it looks like 5 is going to go into all of those numbers, so I'm going to go ahead and factor out a 5. Right, so that would leave an x squared. 5 goes into 120, I think uh, it's 24 times. And then 5 goes into 700, that would be 1,440 times. All right, so that's going to make it a little bit easier to factor it here. So let's see if it, uh, if it does factor. Otherwise, we'll have to use the quadratic formula. So we've got an x. We've got an x. We know both of our signs are minus. So we need factors of 140 that have a sum of 24. Oh, that's, that works, right? 14 and 10, right? 14 and 10 add to 24, and they multiply to give us 140. So we've got 14 and 10. And then we'll just use our zero product property to get x equals 14 and x equals 10. That means that, you know, as our star is coming down, all right, let's just draw a little picture of it here. As our, I'm sorry, our ship is coming down to the surface of the star, right, it would end up hitting this 50,000 mile uh I don't know what we call it, the barrier maybe or something like that, right? Just that point there. After they thrust the thing, the boosters, right, it would take, after 10 seconds, it would hit there. So they would not have hit it soon enough because at this point, it burns up, right? It won't even make it to this point over here, which is, what, 14 seconds, right? Because once it hits this, this 50,000-mile barrier, it's going to burn up. It's too hot for the ship, okay? So that's what we just found. All right, so um, hopefully this helped you understand what was going on. Uh, I'll record videos for the other two. If you need them, you can use them, but I would appreciate you trying them without the video first. All right, thanks for watching.